I want to share with you all something that I've been thinking a lot about recently. The thought came to me while I was trying to run out of my apartment. So I was rushing, getting my bag together, I was getting my water, and I ran out the door, locked it, turned to walk away, and realized I forgot something so important. So I turned back around, unlocked the door, leaned into my apartment and said, hey Alexa, play country music. And the reason I did this was because I have two dogs at home, Silas and Thor, and it would break me if I left them to be lonely at home. And so while I was driving away, it dawned on me, why do I care more about my dog's loneliness in a day than my own loneliness in a day? Please raise your hand if you've ever been lonely. As you can see, the majority of us have felt this way or do feel this way. In fact, a study conducted in 2021 found that 60% of Americans feel lonely, unfulfilled, and lacking connections with those around them. This is a problem because if these feelings persist, they can lead to a negative outlook on our world, less connection with those around us, and even mental disorders such as anxiety and depression. Those are some really scary outcomes, right? But today you're gonna learn that there's a way to become an anomaly in a world that is mainly lonely. But in order to become that, we have to be willing to develop empathy. Hi, I'm Amanda Allard, and I'm a PhD candidate at Michigan State University. And for the last eight to 10 years, I've been working with business owners, phys physicians, and students on how to develop communication, leadership, and empathy skills. But my journey towards developing empathy actually started a lot sooner at the age of nine, but not for the reasons you may think. And if you're still listening, what I'm about to tell you is something that I've been keeping a secret for a very long time, but I'm willing to share with you all right here, right now. At the age of nine, my mother was falsely accused and incarcerated for a crime she didn't commit. She was sentenced to 12 months in a correctional facility, but served 10 and was released on good behavior. Although the details of my mother's incarceration are interesting and intricate, they are not the story I will tell you today. Instead, what I'm going to tell you is about this picture and that nine-year-old girl that went and visited her mother at a prison camp. At this time, I was experiencing something called secondhand incarceration, which is the mental imprisonment of an individual who has a loved one who's incarcerated. I felt unbelievably unseen, unheard, and lonely. And I learned two things during this time. One, that no one was coming to save me out of my loneliness. And two, that there were a lot of people around me who were just as lonely, if not lonelier than me. And so what I started to do was I started interacting with people, practicing my empathy and communication skills. And it peaked when I went to college. And I didn't know much when I went to college, but what I did know is that I didn't want anyone to feel the way I had felt when I was nine. So when there were opportunities to interact with people who tend to be lonely, such as juvenile delinquents, the homeless, or even women and men in nursing homes, I jumped at the opportunity to hone my empathy skills. And the outcome was that my outlook on life improved, my relationships enhanced, and I was no longer lonely. So if you will entrust a bit more of your time to me, I will entrust you with the principles that I've learned along my journey. The first thing I learned was that I had to become aware. I had to become aware of how my life experiences impact my perception of the world. But I also had to be aware that other people have other life experiences that are different from mine that also impact their perceptions. And when I started learning about these experiences other people had, I started to notice something. I noticed sometimes I would be uncomfortable. But uncomfortability is not a bad thing. In fact, I have a saying with my students, get comfortable being uncomfortable because that's where true growth happens. Was I uncomfortable when I interacted with individuals in correctional facilities because the society media news told me to be? A thousand percent. 
But what I ultimately realized after conversing with these ladies and gentlemen was that they're just people like you and me. And they have hopes and dreams like all of us. But I had to be open to hearing their stories. And similarly, I had to be open to telling mine. Dr. Brene Brown talks about the power of vulnerability and mitigating feelings of shame. Today, I was very, very vulnerable with all of you. And I can tell you now, I am no longer ashamed. And I am very proud of who I am and who I was when I was nine. And when you are open to other people's viewpoints and opinions, you're going to make a difference. Dr. Daniel Goleman, in his book, Social Intelligence, talks about how emotions are contagious. When you enter interactions with a positive mindset and with positive emotions, it has this ripple effect with a network of people. Now, I'm not saying every interaction you're going to have is going to be sunshine and rainbows. In fact, there's going to be many times that we're going to have to agree to disagree, as my grandmother always says. But to even get there, we have to be willing to listen. Simon Sinek, who is a well-sought-after author, entrepreneur, and speaker, was recently asked, what is listening? And he said, listening is not the act of hearing, but is instead the art of creating an environment where people feel heard. Could you imagine if you entered every interaction and you felt seen and heard? Wow. But most importantly, we have to want this. Hence, you need to yearn for connection with other people. Jonah Hill recently directed a documentary on Netflix called Stutz. And in this documentary, he interviews his longtime therapist. And he asks him, what is the secret to life? And Stutz says, the secret is that everybody thinks they have it figured out. But in reality, nobody does. Yearn to hear other people's opinions and viewpoints, and you'll probably get actually closer to the real secret of life. Now, some of you may be thinking, Amanda, this sounds really nice, but I know empathy is very difficult to develop, and it's a skill. And you're right, and it's a skill I've been working on for many years, and I still fail at it some days. But it's as simple as looking at someone and saying, I see you, I hear you, and I care about you. And it's so simple, I invite you all to practice it here with me today. So if you will all please stand. And I ask you to turn to someone near you. And I want you, without saying a word, to just make eye contact. Now you may notice this is uncomfortable, But remember, that's the point. Now I want you with only using your eyes to try and communicate, I see you. Finally, I want you to give your partner a nice compliment such as, I'm really glad you're here today, or man, that's a nice sweater. Thank you, you can all be seated. Do you see how the energy in the room changed? Do you see how you felt on the inside? How you feel more alive and connected? That's the power of connection. That's the power of empathy, and that's the power of being an anomaly, and all you had to do was make eye contact with someone for 30 seconds. I used empathy to get out of one of the loneliest parts of my life, but what can you do? What I ask all of you today is to go out and be kind to one another, show empathy, Give service. Use one of the acronyms you just learned. Make eye contact when you interact with people. And when you do this, I ask you to share it with others because just how emotions are contagious, so are good stories. And so I ask you, when you share this on social media or when you're talking with people, end it the way I end it. I say, I anomaly every day by telling my story and teaching others how to be empathetic. And that has made all the difference. Thank you.